Recording in progress. Time is 634, and this is the regular council meeting of Rockport City Council held on November 8th, 2022. I have a roll call to establish quorum. Ward 1? Present. Ward 2? Here. Ward 3? Here. Mayor here. We do have a quorum present. Will you all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance led by... Daniel. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. See. Next item on the agenda is citizens to be heard. At this time, comments limited to three minutes will be taken from the audience and from persons who have signed the speaker's card located at the table at the back of the training room of the service center and delivered to the city secretary before the meeting begins, or written comments received by 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting on any agenda item on any subject matter will be read and summarized in the minutes of the meeting. Persons wishing to address the council and who have registered using the citizen participation form will have up to three minutes to speak. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, council cannot discuss any action or take any action on any item that has not been posted on the agenda. While civil public criticism is not prohibited, disorderly conduct or disturbance of the peace is prohibited by law will be cause for the chair to terminate the offender's time to speak. I have one card from Christy Rutledge. I appreciate this and happy election day. This is the day that we all get to exercise our right as Americans to participate with our, our, vo our vote. Um, so it's a very special day for all of us. Um, I wanna talk to you about um, the same subject and citizen input. Uh, recently came to my attention that citizen input has changed here at City Council. And I emailed all of you, you were all on the email chains, and I was asking questions. Um, you all know that I participate in City Council meetings, dozens of them, and I sometimes speak on multiple items. And you know that um, the procedure has generally been three minutes per agenda item, citizens had an opportunity to speak. So I was a little confused when I submitted my comments and they came at the beginning of the meeting, I asked questions, then I learned that uh, the procedure, the policy has been reinterpreted. It hadn't changed, but it's been reinterpreted and that it never came before council for approval. So I know you can't talk about this tonight, but it feels a little personal, but it's also a little upsetting because I'm participating often and it feels like my speech is being limited. Sometimes Mr. Hutt participates and it feels like his speech is being limited by this new policy that only allows three minutes for all agenda items at the beginning of the meeting. Or you can submit your comments which only give you about 90 seconds worth of participation on any agenda item. So there's some flaws. But what's really bothering me is that limits everyone else who wants to speak. I have been to meetings where 30 or 40 people have come. Over the Rockport drainage issue when the country club flooded, 
there were a lot of people packing this room, and they had things to say. And if this new policy, three minutes, 30 minutes max, at the beginning of the meeting, for all citizens, you're trying to punish me, but you're punishing everyone else in the city of Rockport. I want this to come back to, uh, I want my city council rep and my mayor to put this on the agenda, the next agenda, and I want this new procedure to be talked about and voted on by all of our elected representatives because I get it, you're silencing me. And I see it in the newspaper, I see it everywhere, I hear the chatter, we're long-winded, I get my three minutes. I pay my taxes, and I've been doing that for 20 years here. But I should have the ability to give input on other items as well, and you've restricted that severely, but you've restricted everyone, potentially for generations to come. So bring it back, and let's have an open discussion on how you interpret it. Thank you, Ms. Rutledge. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. All consent agenda items listed are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member requests so, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its regular sequence on the agenda. Council, do we have any items we wish to remove? Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and second. Any further question or debate? Call for vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Mayor, aye. Next item on the agenda, deliberate and act on second and final reading of ordinance granting conditional use permit to allow the use of manufactured home on the property zoned R1, first single family dwelling district located at 157 Kluge Trail, also known as Macomb Subdivision, part of lots 55 and 56, being 3.494 acres, City of Rockport, Oranges County, Texas, subject to compliance with conditions stated within the ordinance, as well as those stipulated in the City of Rockport Code of Ordinances, repealing all ordinances in conflict therewith and providing for severability and providing an effective date. This is Mike, go ahead. Yeah, no changes. Okay. There are no changes. Council, any question? Call for a vote on item nine. Do I have a motion? Uh, I move to approve agenda item nine as presented. Motion. I have a motion to second. Any further question or debate? Call for a vote on item number nine, Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Mayor, aye. Next item on the agenda, deliberate and act on first reading of an ordinance of the City of Rockport amending Code of Ordinances, Chapter 102, <coughs> Utilities, Article 4, Surcharge Revenue Account, by amending Section 102-401, Surcharge, to increase surcharge fee, repealing all ordinances in conflict therewith, providing for severability and providing an effective date. Katie. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Um, we're bringing you back this item. Uh, if you'll remember our last council meeting, we did the annual disbursements to our local volunteer fire departments, and uh, Mr. Brundrett asked that we bring this particular item back and discuss the actual surcharge. So we've done that for you all tonight. A little bit of history. This actually began uh, back in April of 1989 at a dollar. Um, and since that time, it has actually increased up to $1.35. That last increase took place um, in August of 2010. So it's been a while since we've actually reviewed this and discussed it. The purpose of the utility surcharge is to assist our volunteer fire departments with capital purchases. Um, as designed by the existing ordinance, that capital item must be a cost of at least $100 with a two-year or greater lifespan. Um, I think our departments use them for three different purposes. Uh, we do have some representatives here tonight from the Rockport Volunteer Fire Department that are happy to ask any question, answer any questions you may have, or um, staff is also available to answer questions you may have. I did provide for you all an estimate that um, if we were to increase the existing participants, which is 900, 9,939 participants, um, if we were to do a, um, increase of five cents per month per household that would um, 
equate to approximately just shy of $4,000 for the Rockport Volunteer Fire Department annually, um, just shy of $1,200 for Fulton, and um, it would leave, leave an additional $115 for Lamar. So, um, and it is based off of participation based on the utility bills. Uh, the differences in Lamar is specific to those in the peninsula that have the natural gas connections rather than water. Council, have any questions? Any questions for the fire department? Question All right, I'll, I'll champion this one. Uh, so, if we do a five cent increase, four percent per connection, uh, Rockport Volunteer Fire Department gets thirty nine hundred dollars. Uh, that's uh, that buys one set of bunker gear. Uh, Fulton gets eleven $1 hundred dollars. That, that doesn't get us very far. Uh, the, the volunteers, the local volunteer fire departments, provide us a a, a very economical service. If if we were to, to try to uh, take this over with the, you know, either the city or the county, something like that, we would have a substantial tax increase to be able to provide the same level of service and, and or just provide the service uh, to the tune of, I would say, 10 cents, uh, you know, on the ad valorem, uh, something like that. So the five cent, I just don't think gets us there uh, uh, as far as what, what some of the needs may be. Uh, as we all know, everything's getting more expensive and, and I just don't know that that we're meeting all their needs of the fire departments. And I, I would uh, and please have the, the chiefs come up here and, and speak on it, but I just, you know, if they have other needs, what can we do to help? Uh, the other thing would be the the city retains the 5%, so 9,000, right? Is it, uh, yeah, we retain $9,876 of the collections as an administrative fee. I, I don't know that we necessarily need to keep that uh, yes, there is a little bit of little legwork in there as far as the in the utility uh, department with the collections, but uh, I think some goodwill could be had by passing that along to our departments. Uh, so I, I don't have a, a proposal for you of what 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 cent increase I would be comfortable with right now. I would love to hear what everybody else has to say before before I say, hey, let's make it twenty dollars or you know whatever. But that's what I have to say. And if, if the chiefs would come up and, and could give us a little. Can I interject? Yes, ma'am. Um, I had asked Katie to give you that five cent increment so that you would know that every five cent that you chose, this is what it, it will just gotcha. double. So okay. that's just an increment provided. It's not a suggestion. We've left the ordinance blank. Yes, so you can, you know, you can do, we prefer you keep it in five cent in increments just because that's easy for us. Mm -hmm. But the ordinance is blank. So if you vote tonight to up it, 20 cents, you know, it's times four over here. Yes, ma'am. The other part is we can get the information and table it and bring it back if you want to gather more data. It doesn't have to be all or nothing tonight. Yes, ma'am. Other question, comment? Uh, so, if you're correct, the first question um, in here it talks about that we currently have no wholesale cost customers participating. Can staff elaborate on that? Who Who is that and why are they not participating? So um, a few years ago, and I'm not sure why the decision was made by uh, Mr. Carruth um, to allow our customers to make the choice whether or not to participate. Um, I have not been able to locate um, why that happened, um, but at that point in time, many of our customers chose not to. We have over 11,000 connections, if that gives you an idea, close to 12,000 at this point. Um, and as you can see, there's about 2,000 of them not participating. Um, so that would be the, the scenario there. Our wholesale customers, we actually have two that provide water. Um, it used to be Copano, Copano Heights and Copano Ridge, but now they are under a, they, they've been bought by a larger company and it's, I believe, Southwest Water or something of that sort. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. Um, and that's 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 what I, I thought. Um, again, not knowing as a general citizen, that was always my understanding is that for this utility fee to be eligible, that it had to be fully voluntary and the citizens would have the right to, to not pay. I just didn't know if there was a nuance with the wholesalers, in other words, that 
the owner said, I'm not even going to ask because they may have to administer. I, I, I didn't know. That's kind of where that was coming from. So my next question, and, and I'm going to watch you, Katie, to make sure you don't fall out of your chair. Just kidding. Um, could we um, provide a step? Um, and I, I should have formulated this better before I, I came up with it, but essentially where you send a notice to the customer and say, this is the new adopted rate for you. If you would like to increase that voluntary contribution, $5, $10. So like the fire departments have to do like a letter drive and that's a, a really amazing thing and I'm not trying to take away from that at all. But if you sent something to my house and you said, would you voluntarily contribute an additional $5 per month, knowing that this is going as a direct contribution to the fire department, I'm probably likely to say yes. Is that possible without being overly complicated from a, from a billing administrative standpoint? It would add an extra. You know, I think a lot of people are probably on auto pay. Mm -hmm. And so that contribution of the extra would be, we're going to have to think through the whole process. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that's the direction you want to go, you tell them we're going to do it, we'll make it work. It just gives us a little bit of time. It Thank would be, you. and I, I, think I, know, I try to send it. these great ideas to you ahead of time, but okay. you know, driving home from from work today, I, I came up with it, and I just knew <laughs> y'all were excited to hear about it. But that was just something we might want to think about. I, you know, I, I as we increase, obviously, it needs to be clear to the citizens that this is still an opportunity for them to opt out. But I, I want to see how we can get from something that can the band aid to something that actually may be significant in the way of, of funding for the departments. Um, just kind of last comments is that, you know, for me personally coming into this position, how we fund public safety as a whole is a high priority for me, um, both from fire service, prior prevention, medical, health medical, emergency management, all of that. And holistically, we have to look at how we fund that and, and put it at a level that, that makes sense and for a community that clearly has a need, we're a very complex community. A lot of times we say, well, what are other cities doing? Well, other cities aren't Rockport. They don't have the, the visitor population, the, the, the transient, if you will, summers and winters, um, coastal communities, aging, retiree. Like we are, we are very special and unique and, and we can't keep not funding public safety, in my opinion, the way that we've continued to do it. So. I'm in support of an increase for the utility fee that was brought up during the, not just um, the last meeting, but during the budget process. I'm with Com uh, uh, Councilman Bendret. I don't know what that number is just right this second without hearing other comments from the, the other council members. Um, but I, I'm, I'm for uh, an incremental increase for this year. I'm all for firemen and not just because you guys are in the room. Okay. Now, now, now they got that out of the way. I would actually be in favor of maybe a phased surcharge in chain increase. You know, five cents is obviously a little small. Is maybe, you know, ten cents and then ten cents in the following year. Because remember, we're all dealing with a whole lot of negative economic indicators right now. Let me just be nice and say it that way. Okay. So how much longer is gonna last? No idea. But if the firemen can't come put the fire out at my house because they don't have enough money, what's more important? So I would almost suggest maybe we do a 10 year, a 10 cent, and then wait a year, maybe then do another 10 cent or five cent and 15. I would like to see at least 20 cents, if not 25 cents. But I think if we phased it, it's easier to plan and we have a chance for all the economic indicators to possibly turn so it's not a, you know, a burden on the people that are just making it right now. So that's my thoughts on that. Just throwing an idea out on that. We could do five cents um, every six months, cap it at two dollars. I don't know how high y'all want to go, but. 
you know, there's, like I said, the decision doesn't have to be made tonight, but going on the phased approach. Okay. Well, let's let's look at the let's 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 bring those back to council. What we kind of half discussed. I, I love the five cent every six months until we get to two dollars. Actually, would be I think would be a fair number. I mean, that's still a lot cheaper than like Brad said that we get a fire district and have to add have ten cents mm -hmm. added to our ad valorem that we're already paying too much for. So, you know, in that way, you know, it gives it gives the guys in the back there a chance to plan for what's coming. And the citizens to plan for what's coming, and five cent increments aren't going to hurt a whole lot in the long run. I appreciate the fire departments too. Y'all, y'all guys do a great job, and I've told you. Postpone, whatever. <laughs> Table means permanent, doesn't it? Okay. I remember the class. Put it off till the next meeting. I make a motion to postpone this agenda item until uh, our budget director, city manager, can come back with a couple of options that we can look at. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? If not, we call for vote. Or one. Aye. Or two. Aye. Or three. Aye. Mayor, aye. Next item on the agenda, deliberate and act on the purchase of a 2023 John Deere 320P backhoe. Mike? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, th this is a routine purchase for the fiscal year using the uh, vehicle and equipment replacement plan. Uh, this is replacing a 20-year-old unit and the current unit will be relegated to a backup unit, a reserve unit, and will stay in, in our fleet, so to speak. But this comes uh, to you for $143,131.38. And uh, we are using a, a buy board source. It's called Sourcewell, and the money is in the budget. All right. Questions? Move to approve item uh, 11. 11 as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or debate? Can we try it out? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Call for vote Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Aye. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Not here. Mayor, aye. Thank uh, you. Next item, number 13, report from the city manager. So, Any questions? If not, I, I, go ahead. Our, never mind. I lost it. We but skipped item 12. I didn't mention that. We were not going to do item 12. No. It's postponed. Next item on the agenda is uh, information from council and so forth. So, on the wrong page here. Anyway, report from council. I was right in the first place. I have one. Friday is the most important day of the year, Veterans Day. November 11th at 11 o'clock, Veterans Memorial Park. We will be having our Veterans Day ceremony. Everyone is welcome to attend. There is also a free spaghetti dinner at the American Legion, lunch at the American Legion afterwards starting at 1130. So I expect to see the fire department, the police department, and the publisher of the Rockport Pilot. Minimum. Um, and um, yeah, I would like to have everybody come out for me every day as Veterans Day. And uh, other than that, Ward 1 had some flooding. 
but it, luckily it went away pretty quick, but we still got a lot of standing water because I guess Ward 1 just is now a retention pond. So someday we'll get it fixed. That's all I got. Uh, Today's a good day. It's uh, election day. Hope everybody uh, went out and exercised their their citizens' right and, and ability to, to vote. Minute. And I'm going to drag this out just for Miss <laughs> Miss Jackson. No, I'm kidding. Um, the um, the stormwater and floodplain management advisory committee met yesterday. I did attend, but I'll I'll defer to uh, uh, Mayor uh, for comment on that. Um, other than that, just uh, we had charter review uh, joint meeting earlier, and and just. You know, again, thank those folks for their willingness to serve, and thank you to the citizens for your willingness to provide input. This is a very important process for all of us, and uh, we value that input and look forward to continued dialogue regarding our charter. Nothing to report. I want to keep it nice and short so uh, some people can go home and look at results. I've got one thing, the Stormwater Floodplain Management Advisory Committee met the other day and we talked about a lot of important things, but one of the things that's discussed at some length was Little Bay and the ski basin area down there and what the water quality is and the seagrass dying off and so forth. And I think one of the most interesting things that, that was brought up was that after a lot of study and a lot of work done by people that are knowledgeable and experienced in dealing with this is, these issues, there is still no firm idea on what exactly it is that is causing the problems. And it may be a lot of things. There are a lot of processes being considered by the county, by the NAV district, by the city, and by the town of Fulton and things that are going on that may help, which will include rerouting some water that will run off into Ranges Bay instead of the Little Bay area. And some of those things may help, but but a definite solution to the problem hasn't been determined yet, and we're still working on it. And just to say this, I agree with the town of Fulton and with the Navigation District. This is an important issue, and we need to find out what the problem is so it can be fixed. Little Bay is important to the people that live here. I don't have another word to give you. We we're going to have an executive session. Uh, we will meet in executive session pursuant to provisions of Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code in accordance with authority contained in Section 551.071, consultations with attorneys seeking advice from the attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or a settlement offer, and on a matter in which the duty of the attorney of the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter, Burnside Services, Inc., and Concho Street Drainage Project, and Section 551.074, Personnel Matters, Deliberate Appointment, Employment, Evaluation, Reassignment, Duties, Discipline, Dismissal of Public Officer or Employees, to wit, the City Secretary, Evaluation, the Municipal Court Judge, and Municipal Court Administrator Valuations. We are in executive session. It is 7.01.
It is 7.13 p.m. We are back from executive session. We're taking no action. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion adjourned. I have motion and you're adjourned. Uh, we'll split it. Uh, she can get it. I'll take the second.